we're going to talk about event notifications. And this has been a big one lately. You know, we've had a lot of customers with, you know, PRI problems and, and everything like that. So event notifications is the way that you can have the system do email alerts to your, you know, the IT manager or the IT team to let you know of different events that have, that have occurred in the in the short system. A big one we're, you know, that we're doing in, you know, in, in the education space is you can do email alerts for 911 calls, you know, so it can work in, in a lot of different companies if you're looking to be alerted when you have a 911 call that comes in. Or if you have a D channel down on your PRI or you have a, a, a fan issue and stuff, we'll cover some of the, the most common event filters. So the easiest way to, you know, to kind of think about this is how many times have you had a problem with your short tail system and the way you find out about it is from one of your end users. They say, hey, I'm trying to call this phone number and I just get, you know, reorder tone on my, on my display. So that's where we can use the event notification. So we simply log into your shortware director underneath your maintenance section, select event filters. What that'll do is allow you to click new and to build a custom filter. And this is usually where you need to know what you're, you know, what you're looking for. So we'll kind of cover what the process is for building an event filter, and then you can kind of go back into your system after, you know, today and build it, you know, whichever event filters you want. And Travis is going to send out this PowerPoint presentation afterwards, so you'll be able to grab these event IDs and stuff out of the presentation to, to build your own alerts later today. So we hit new. So on the very top, we have our server options. So if you have if you have only one server, it's great. You can just leave the voicemail server selected. If you have multiple servers, I recommend selecting all. The advantage is, is we want to be able to monitor any switch that's assigned to any of our servers, not just on our, our on our primary short tail server. Under source, if you just leave it on shoreware and any, that'll it'll monitor all of the short tail services. You could also use this to to monitor uh, a particular Windows service on the on the, the short tail server. I don't know of any of our customers that are, are using it to monitor just a, a regular Windows service, but you could. And then we design all of our event filters that we set up, you know, recommended customers by event ID. So you can see the event ID, we went ahead and selected 1342. And 1342 in this case is a D channel down. So if we lose our D channel on one of our PRIs, go ahead and send an alert. And you can see on type is all, so any alert that or event that has a 1342 and then the email address at the bottom. So you can only put one email address in there. So I did engineering, which is like a, a, a you know, a distribution list that we use to alert us of these things, which goes to multiple engineers. If you need to create these alerts to go to multiple people instead of a distribution list, you can simply save it and hit the copy button on the top and then just change the email address on the bottom and you can create multiple alerts of this, you know, for the same event ID. So when your D channel goes down, what does it look like? So you get it. This is what the event ID looks like in on the short tail server itself. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a copy of this. It's going to email it out to you. So this is what you would see. So switch T, uh, SGT1K. So that's the name of the switch. So if you were to name your switches differently, whatever the name of your switch is, you're going to see there. So if you wanted to name your switches Portland PRI or Seattle PRI, you know, or, or Seattle T1K, something like that that would let you know which switch is having a D channel down. It also gives you the IP address, you know, so you know uh, based on IP schemes what location that falls into. So this is what the information is going to look like that you'll, you'll receive via email. And they will vary a little bit just depending on what event ID, you know, you're receiving. So the big question we always get is what event ID should we be monitoring? So we came up with a list of most common ones reading out of the, you know, you can pull, there's a, there's an appendix for, for event IDs. I believe it's in the maintenance guide and it's probably got 20 pages of event IDs. So we kind of went through those and, and, and found the most common event IDs. So switch, uh, the switch event ID 140, it tells you if your flash memory in your switch is, you know, is, is throwing errors. A lot of time we'll see that one on system upgrades. The nice thing about the short tail system is if you get a switch or an event ID of 140, your system isn't going to be down. The system has back end memory that we can FTP boot off the server and bypass the flash memory to still keep that up and running so we can get an RMA switch out, you know, to that remote site while we, you know, we, 
without losing functionality of that, you know, that, that type of phone system or phone. So that's a that's a big feature on the on the built into the short bell switches. The next one is the event ID is 162, and this will just let you know if the short tail system is, you know, is registering two IP addresses with different MAC addresses on your network. So it's a good thing to monitor just for, you know, by chance you, if something happens to get put on the network with the same IP as one of your short tail switches, if the system sees two MAC, different MAC addresses, it will report that. Or if you RMA a switch and you swap it out and you forget to change the MAC address, you know, then you can get an alert that the, you know, that the MAC address isn't what it should be in the database. The next two kind of go together. It's uh, 166 and 167. The only moving parts in the short tail switches is the fan. So 167 is a fan moving slow, and that just usually means the ball bearings are going out. You know, if you get a 167, usually it means let's, let's open up a support ticket so we can get that switch R made. Once it goes to 166, that means the fan is no longer working. Shortel does test all their switches to, you know, to run for a set amount of time without any fans, especially if you have your, your switches running in like a server room. They're going to be perfectly fine running without a fan for a set period of time, gives, giving us, us enough time to get that switch R made. 170 and 171 kind of go together too, and the only time we really see these, the warning or the, or the temperature exceeding, is for switches that we have in – smaller networking closets that don't have air conditioning or something like that and you know on, on hot summer days then we'll, we'll we'll get the temperature warnings on those switches so that's one thing to just kind of be aware of if you're putting switches in in, in networking closets and stuff like that, that have minimal ventilation that we want to kind of monitor those event IDs so that if we do get a temperature warning we can either address move the switches or you know address that the temperature in that room with a you know, with a smaller air conditioning unit or some kind of ventilation for that room. Event 1319, when we talked about earlier, I talked uh, a little bit, it was the emergency services call or 911 call. If you set that one up, it'll actually send an alert out, and it's nice it says there was, a nine, there was an emergency services call placed from this IP address and this user at this time. So you get the, the time of the call, you'll get the IP address of the phone, and you'll get the user currently assigned to that phone when a 911 call was placed. So you could send that, those emails out to a group of users outside your IT team if you wanted to or to the front desk so that when, if you have the ambulance or fire truck show up at the front desk, they know exactly what location placed that 911 call. That's, that's a nice notification you can do. Shortel has some emergency services apps you can buy that can do screen pops and stuff for your for your front desk and stuff like that is if it's if you need a little bit more functionality than just an email notification 1342 and 1343 these are your PRI and the nice thing is is we build an alert for each one of these and it will monitor all of the PRIs that you have in your system so if you have you know five six seven eight PRIs it will monitor all of them at the same time so we don't have to set up multiple alerts D channel some people just want the down. I like. I recommend doing the up also, so that when your D channel does come back up after being down, you do get an alert and say, "Oh, look, yep, looks like the, the carrier was able to fix it. They got, we, you know, it came back up. Now we should be able to to test our outbound calls or inbound calls." And the last one is 1899. So a lot of people ask me what CSIS. CSIS is the service on the server that controls communicator. So if the CSIS service fails to start on the server, none of your communicator clients are going are gonna to be able to log in and, and, and work. So that's a good service to monitor on, on your HQ server, just allowing you to know ahead of time, oh, are we going to have a communicator issue this morning because at 2 o'clock we did database maintenance, the CSIS service failed to start back up. That's a, you know, another important one to just kind of monitor and be, be aware of. Usually you can, you can resolve that issue just by restarting your server because you know, uh, a service started up before it should have, and you can resolve that pretty easily by uh, restarting your short tail server, you know, before the, the workday starts or at the end of a workday if we're, if we're having an issue.